Thanks for joining us for today's episode of The Capitalist Investor. Uh, we got a little change in the lineup today. So you got Mark, as always, Diamond Hands Derek uh, left us uh, hanging here. He obviously went on vacation or something like that. He's having fun. Here we are sitting on St. Patty's Day, cranking out a podcast. Yeah, he's enjoying nice weather down in Florida we right be, now. We should be having fun right now. Some people are dedicated to their craft. Some are right. It's, you know, someone's got to keep the lights on here. Yeah, got to work hard, play hard hands. though. <laughs> Definitely not diving in. <laughs> All right, so you got Mark. We got Nasty Nate Fisher. That's right. That's our chief investment guru. We got Lloyd Boy Luke. Sometimes people call him Lloyd Luke. Other times they call him yeah. Luke Lloyd. He goes both ways. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, we're bringing out the big guns today, and uh, the reason for that is I want to talk a little bit about the golden rule of investing, <clears throat> which is pretty simple, folks. It's don't be dumb, okay? Don't be stupid. Don't do anything that you shouldn't be doing. And we're going to help you to kind of figure out what some of those things are, right? Because there's, look, if you're a novice investor, if you're a rookie or first-timer, you're going to make mistakes, and Absolutely. it's okay as long as you have the ability to learn from your mistakes. Well, how's that saying go? Is like return on capital versus return of capital? I'm not sure, but rule, rule number one is don't lose money. And if you do, you learn from how you lose money and don't make the same mistake twice. If you lose all your money, there is no rule two. You're well, there, done. There, 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 there is if there's stimulus coming your way. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's right. The stimmy money drops yeah. in your lap. Yeah, it's free money nowadays. You yeah. just never know when it's going to fall. Yeah, this happy St. Paddy's Day and happy stimmy day. Yeah. Right, right. I think, yeah. the, I think the stimmy fell in everyone's laps today. They're hitting. They're hitting bank accounts. All right, so <clears throat> let's just kind of go through. I mean, what are some dumb moves that you guys have seen people make or you just kind of shake your head like, man, you're going to regret that? Let's talk about Diamond Hands right now. Like, I think Diamond Hands is- Are we this, making fun of Derek? I think we're making fun of Derek right now. <laughs> Diamond Hands and Derek, yeah. I mean, this is a mentality nowadays that I think is not a good mentality to get in. I understand where they're coming from when you hold good quality companies, but in the long term, when you're holding GameStop, AMC, all these companies that are basically failing business models forever, that's not a good long-term strategy. So I think that's something we have to address, especially in today's world. Yeah, in Diamond Hands, uh, what we mean by that, I'm sure most of our listeners know what that means. But the, the whole diamond hands concept revolves around not selling. No matter what happens, hold the line, don't sell. F fool number one, if you make money, you sell. Nobody goes broke taking profits. Yeah, exactly. Right? So know, know when you're going to buy and know when you're going to get out of a stock or, or a bond or an ETF or whatever your asset class is. You have to have parameters of... I've made what I want. I got out. I got what I wanted out of this investment. And now it's time to move on and find the next one. Yeah. So I, as as you bring up the whole diamond hands thing, that kind of <clears throat> the thing it jogs in my in my mind is there there has to be a clear distinction between being a smart investor and being loyal to a group of quote unquote degenerates on right. social media. Like, which is more important to you? Do you want to be a smart investor who makes money? Or do you want to be? Do you want to feel like you're a part of some cult? I'd rather and hold the line. I'd rather make money. I want to make money. Some right. so, so money over message boards. Yeah, yeah. That's right, it. right. That's, that's it. it. And that's and remember, the, that's the same. All right, the show's done. That's it. That's yeah, all. Right. Exactly. <laughs> you're only the fool, though. Remember, if you can't find somebody to buy it higher than you did, right? So that's what the stock market is: finding somebody willing to pay a higher price for a stock that you bought. And that's the kind of the mentality right now: is that nobody's really looking to sell. If they're never looking to sell. The people that do sell, like you said, degenerates are going to make a ton of money while almost all the other retail investors lose lose their butt, <laughs> yeah. lose their ass. Yeah. Now, let's be clear. We're, you know, I called them degenerates. So did you. That's what they call themselves. Yeah. We're not, we're, not, we're, not, we're not being nasty and mean. Nasty Nate's being nasty. Right. But that's, um, that's just, that's what they call themselves. You know, it's kind of, they, they make jokes, right? Yeah. So, um, all right. Nate, what do you think, man? What What's a dumb mistake that you see people make that, uh, that has you shaking your head? I, I just think a lot of uh, amateurs don't distinguish between investing and gambling. There, there, there's two different there's two different things, right? Going to the casino and putting all your money on red and praying to God that you get, uh, you know, 48% chance that it goes your way or investing, doing your homework and calculating a risk return that you're comfortable with to risk your money, right? There's, yeah. al there's always the main thing about knowing what can go wrong and how to get out of it when it goes wrong. Yeah. Well, let's remember this. But stock that's not fun to think about. 
Yeah, but that's, that, that's but that's why the novice investor doesn't think do, about it. Doesn't do it's well. Not fun. Do, doesn't do well over a long period of time. Nobody goes to Vegas and says, "Hey, man, I'm gonna I'm going with a thousand dollar bankroll. I expect to lose it all. Yay, let's do it." Yeah, that's the way I approach Vegas every well, time. Well, we know that <laughs> deep down inside, but it, we still approach every single table thinking we got a chance of winning. But okay? they're, they're, I'm trying to put a thousand dollars down on the craps table and go on a roll and make ten thousand dollars in my return. Right? But 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 the key takeaway is you have to approach investing as I'm willing to lose all my money. Correct. You, you're not going out there extending yourself, taking a second mortgage on the house, putting your family's livelihood at risk. Just so you can be in game stock call options that expire at the end of the week. That is just pure stupidity. Yep. Right? Yeah. You're not taking calculated risk. Right. Absolutely. And if you take a long-term perspective, the market's supposed to go up over time. It does historically always go up, right? So when you're taking these high-risk trades and maybe going into a penny stock or these high-risk options, that's not the way to approach it because in the long term, your money should grow, right? If you are investing it somewhat properly. Like, you might not be outperforming the market. Our goal here is to outperform the market, right? That's what we come in day in, day out and try to do. But for a lot of people, if they just go ahead and put their money into something um, it should grow as long as they're not putting it into a completely over risky the long asset. run. Yeah. yeah, right. I mean, time horizon is always important. Yeah, right. Um, but you know, look. I mean, we had a meeting uh, yesterday with someone who's got, I believe, a four-year-old child. Right, and we're talking about college planning. Yep. Right. So you got 14 years until you need any money for college. I'm extremely confident that the market will be higher 14 years from today yeah. right I, mean, I, I hope so if it's if, not we probably <laughs> we're, we're, we're out of business major dude happened. we're out yeah. of business yeah, yeah. <laughs> either that or we've shifted our investment strategy towards something like bitcoin yeah yeah, right? yeah absolutely um all right I'm, I'm gonna go up next so one of one of the biggest blunders i see is with novice investors you know especially the ones that are using the the stimmy checks that they've gotten over the course of the past 12 months or so what, Nate, we tallied it up yesterday. What is it, like 3200 bucks or something per person? Roughly, per, yeah, per individual, yeah. All right, so about 3200 bucks uh, over the course of the last year. And I had people reach out after the first, I think it was 1200 Was that it? Was, I don't know. Yeah, it was 1200 It was 600 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, and then 14 yeah. All right. 12, 6, 14. So after the 1200 I had people reach out like, hey, dude, where should I invest my money? Right, you know, trying to trying to hit a home run. I just to... got that text two days ago. Yeah, like, yeah. hey, I'm back on Robin Hood. What's, what's yep. the stop? Literally yep. got that text two days ago from a friend. It wasn't from Tony, was it? No. <laughs> maybe, maybe it was. I, I, don't get, I, don't, I don't get the stock text, though. I get the what option call should I buy. Like, I, no, I that's, that's, that's even more worse. riskier. That's, yeah, that's worse, worse, dude. Yeah. Your, friend, your friends are bigger degenerates. Uh, they are. They that really are. That is worse, are. man. I mean, look, you know, I think when you're starting off, especially if, if if you're listening right now and you're planning on how you should invest the 1400 bucks that just fell in your lap, or if you're a family of four, it's a little bit more than that, right? $2,000 so, $2, child uh, tax credit too. Yeah, <laughs> right. So um, if you're thinking about what to do with that, um, I think one of the biggest blunders people make is they, they try to swing for the fences, right? And, and you might say, well, hey dude, if you swing for the fences and strike out, it's only 1400 bucks. But my issue with that is investor psychology. And, you know, if I, if I was playing baseball back when I was eight years old, first year of, I think, kid pitch, you're eight years old, dude, you got a kid pitching against you. If I stepped up to the plate all season long and struck out, I don't think I would have ever played again. No, okay. season's done, one and um, done. I took enough of a beat down that I would never, ever, ever play again. If I step up to the plate that first time and I hit a home run, you better damn believe I'm going to play forever. Yeah. But that's not realistic either. But if I stepped up to the plate and I had a decent batting average throughout the season, I got some hits along the way, I'm going to continue to play the game. And I think as this relates to investor psychology, I think that's really an important analogy that you can apply towards investing. If you, if you take your 1400 bucks. Then you buy a bunch of call options with it yep. and you go to zero, dude, you might put your tail between your legs You're and walk game. away from the game and never play the game again. You're scared. You're scared. Terrified. Of that yep. Right. It beat you up mentally and emotionally At, on the, on the flip side, dude, there's no secret Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, those kind of companies. There's no secret. Those are good companies. 
those aren't going to be a 10 bagger for you over the next two years, right? right? Like they're not going to 10X. Maybe they will. I highly doubt it because they're already trillion plus dollar companies. Um, But that's your single and your double. So what what I think early investors should do is get a win, dude. Mm -hmm. Like take the easy win. Get a win while you can because it's going to do something to you psychologically that's going to cause you to say, that felt good. That was fun. I want to do it again. The one thing that a lot of people don't account for is the knuckleball in investing, right? So I used to be a knuckleball pitcher. I love talking baseball right Dar- now. It's trash. Yeah, it's right. Trash. I, I could never throw a fastball, garbage. so I had to resort to something arm, else. Arm was garbage. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Tim arm was garbage. All right, we got diamond hands Derek. We got weak arm Luke. There we go. I like it. I could never break 80 miles per hour in a fastball, so I had to throw a knuckleball. But I played Division three college. At least I played something. But anyway. Yeah, that's good. Anyway, um, the knuckleball, though, when it comes to investing, the knuckleball can do anything, right? That's what makes it an amazing pitch mm-hmm. because it can move down, left, right, up. You don't. You never never know what the knuckleball is going to do. So when you go in blindly, like you were talking about these call options or not picking maybe some best of breed stocks like the Amazons, Apples of the world, a lot of things can happen in the market. There's so many different variables. And when that knuckleball comes at you, if you're too heavily into an investment, you know, over leveraged or you have these call options, you can lose all of your money. And we all, we're all talking about this a lot, but there's knuckleballs happen a lot in the market. All right, dude. So I'm going to take that to the next level. So yeah. I, I, like where you, I like where you went with that. <clears throat> a knuckleball does absolutely nothing at all when there's no wind. Yeah, it's a it's a, a floater. knuckleball it right in is there. all over the place when there's wind. Correct. There's a lot of freaking wind right now. Yep. Noise. Right. You got stocks being manipulated. Dude, GameStop. I don't know. It's over two hundred bucks a share as yep. we're recording this. Yep. Shouldn't be. Stock's not worth that. Yep. What, what are they going to do? They're going to. So, so there's two there's two schools of thought, right? One, the market can stay ra- more irrational than you can stay solvent. And number two, I'm going to put my PM hat on right now and say, hey, if you want to be involved in these speculative things and take those shots, right, instead of sitting on the sidelines, size it appropriately of your portfolio. So maybe it's 10% or less of your total assets that you're trying to swing for the fences while you let that 90 to 80% actually compound in the Amazons of the world, the Microsofts. Right. Right? Yeah. I like that. And I think that's totally prudent, right? You carve out a reasonable chunk of your portfolio and you can go buck wild and reckless yeah, with it. Yeah. But the rule is, if you lose it all, you can't go borrow from the other pot of your <laughs> right, yeah. right, right. You, you're retiring. Your jersey's not going to be on the rafters. You sucked at it. Okay? <laughs> yeah. You're done, dude. You're out of the game. You now you're just going to plug and chug. And you can't complain about it either. I mean, no. there's a ton of people out there that are complaining about losing all their money in the markets and how, you know, they should get their money back or they should get more stimulus, whatever it be, right? I mean, it's, there's a lot of complainers out there. Don't be a complainer. <laughs> if you're going to go ahead and make stupid decisions, you're going to get stupid results. I mean, that's what yeah. the, the whole part of investing in stock markets is a zero-sum game. Right. Somebody wins, somebody loses. And that's, why we, that and that's why we love it, because we're all competitive. We all love winning. Yeah. That's why we love the stock market. We all, we all played sports. But you know what, <laughs> so. dude? So we all love winning, but, um, dude, I used to practice my ass off. Yeah. When I was a kid, my dad, he gave me a rubber baseball, and he took me out to the garage, and he put a square on the garage. Yep. Yep. My mom was pissed. She thought I was going to ruin the garage. And my dad's like, you throw the ball into that square all day long, every day. Absolutely. That's what I did. And I beat the hell out of that garage, dude. I I I destroyed it. (laughs) I was there with you. My dad used to make me run laps around my neighborhood when I struck out when I was like five years old. So I've been there, done that. Yeah. It takes a lot of practice. So we want to win, but we also do whatever it takes to give us an edge. That's important. Yeah. It's not like we just want to win, dude, and we just show up and we think we're smarter than everyone else and we're going to pick better stocks. Dude, we work our butts off to try and get an edge. That's what it's all about, dude. I think we've all been around the ringer, too. We've, we've made those stupid mistakes, so that way we can prevent those stupid mistakes from happening to other people. Like when, you, when we first started out investing, we didn't know exactly what to do. At least I didn't when I was 16 years old and first started trading stocks. I didn't know exactly what to do. I had to learn the fundamentals, the technicals. It took time to build that up. But I made some stupid mistakes back then, but I'm glad I did because it taught me so much in how I can use properly managed stock strategies and fundamentals, technicals to my advantage now. Yep. Nate, final thoughts from you? Do the homework, man. Put Dude, the time yeah. in. If you if you don't put the time in, it's the same thing like you guys were talking about in sports, practicing. You got to put the time in to be be good at anything you do in life. It's the same thing investing. You're going to take your lumps. You're going to take your bruises. 
Don't quit. Put the time in. Learn from your mistakes and don't keep making the same mistake over and over and over again. Yes, learn from your mistakes, dude. There's always a lesson. Always a lesson. And a mis- making a mistake without learning from that mistake, it's not a good situation to be in. Right. No. You're just going to continue to repeat that same mistake over and over and over again. All right. Well, that wraps up today's show. Uh, I'm going to thank our, our all-star panel here. The, 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 what, what do they call them like when the baseball players went on strike where they substitute players they brought in? Scabs. scabs. <laughs> Is that what they're called? Yeah. Scabs. You guys are the scabs, yeah. dude. Yeah. <laughs> I like to think of myself as the DH, you know, coming in here. There you heavy. go, dude. No, there we go. All right. Well, thanks to Knuckleball Luke. Yes, yeah, sir. That's what we're going to call him Knuckleball they Luke. They used to call me Nuxy back in the day. Le- left arm Nuxy. Luke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks to Nasty Nate Fisher. And uh, obviously, thanks to me, because I'm here as well. So I, I'll give myself my own well, thank thanks. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. All right. Hey, everyone. Thanks to you for listening. We appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button. Shoot us any questions, comments to info at swpconnect.com. Check out the YouTube channel. And uh, we'll talk with you next week. Thank you. <laughs>